Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute loser. You should really find something bad to do with your time. But in either case, I do genuinely appreciate you being here. Thank you very much for coming along. So for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this post triple miscellaneous saurus world this post july ban list where we take a look at how we're going to play dinos how this format has already started to shape up now of course it's still very much early days so there's much of this that's open to interpretation and much of this that can be changed however for today's list we do have a go second variant now there is a bit of a caveat to this i do strongly believe that the best way to play this is with the scrap engine at least in the side if you're gonna play going second so when you are forced to go first you actually have an ability to play otherwise you pretty much just lose so that's at least my immediate thoughts on how we proceed now in terms of the rest of it obviously the aim here is to just try and blow our opponent out and either go for an otk or at least break their board sufficiently that we're going to be able to follow up and kill them very quickly afterwards the sad reality is that miss going down to one means that we can't grind or go for quite as long as we did before, so we really just want to capitalise on that and just smash the fuck out of our opponents. Now if you are watching today's video and you're feeling inspired, maybe you're still feeling a little bit but frustrated from the fact that Miss got hit to one and you want to pick up some new cards, check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store and if you go ahead and use that, you'll get a discount courtesy of yours truly. Also, if you're the kind of person that enjoys the channel and you want to pick up some signed cards, not that I normally gloat or I don't want to sound kind of vain here, but here we go anyway. If you're interested in getting signed cards, of course, let them know when you purchase on your checkout and we can arrange for it to be signed before it's sent out to you. Of course, this will add a delay to the postage, but it's something that can be done. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the video. So whilst we're gearing up for this, obviously I just want to make a quick note here as well. I will have a video out about the post Misk World, so you can have a look at that if you want some additional food for thought going into this new format. So we start off with two copies of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. I still think two is absolutely correct. A third is just really not necessary. You're likely to just brick on it, and that's not something that we can afford. A single copy of Pancratops. It's Pancratops. It's at one. <laughs> we're going to just max out on it. Triple copies of Soli in Overraptor. Um, it's Soli in Overraptor. I think, honestly, in as much as Misk getting hit was bad, if Overraptor got hit, we'd be absolutely fucked. This deck would be unplayable. Two copies of a Nimadorn Arcasaur. Some people are looking at playing three copies. I really don't think a third is necessary. I think two is absolutely plenty for this deck. I just think it's silly to play anything more than this, personally. Now, on to our baby ratios here. We're running one Petite and two Baby Cerasaurus. So... Just to add to this, of course, if we're playing the more combo-centric variant, we play additional copies, so we play three baby and one petite. I think that this lineup, though, works really nicely. You could side a third for if you are forced to go first, so that you can side it in with your scrap package and go absolutely mental. Just a way that you could consider playing it, at least in the meantime, until you figure out exactly how you want to play. A single copy of Miscellaneousaurus. It's lonely, it's so sad, but it's all we have. A single copy of Giant Rex to partner with it. Both the lonely boys at one. And that is it for our main deck, Dinosaurs, of course. We move on to what else is in the deck. So we'll start off with hand traps, one driver, three gammas, the usual package here. Still incredibly strong, especially when going second. It can just end your opponent's turn if they're not wise to it, especially if you hit something like a normal summon. This can actually just blow them out. It's unreal. Triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Um, it's Ash Blossom. It's the most generic hand trap that's out there, maybe apart from the likes of Impermanence, but it hits most decks in at least some capacity. And honestly, I still think it's worth playing for that reason alone. And then we round off our monsters in the main deck with two copies of DD Crow. I think that this is really quite sufficient. Uh, it's going to hit a lot of decks. Of course, it can hit the likes of Striker, hitting away that Engage. It can hit the likes of Eldritch. It can hit Tri Brigade. It hits a lot of decks in a lot of different ways. It's just a really, really strong card to consider and something you should definitely look at playing in your decks. I prefer it to Ghost Spell. Ghost Spell is really cool, again, for anti Tri Brigade, but a lot of the time it doesn't resolve because they just have Apollo anyway, whereas this can at least interrupt them at different parts of the game. Just, again, some food for thought. 
Now onto our spells here. So we have triple copies of Pot of Prosperity. Uh, Prosperity is still the strongest option, at least in my opinion, for this deck. Again, if you want to cheap out, you can use other options. Maybe you want to save some money. Maybe you're a budget player. You can use something like Desires, say. But honestly, I think that this is more than good enough. Being able to search a specific part, especially for the games where you are forced to go first, when you need to see that final combo piece, just incredibly strong. And if you really don't feel you need it, you can just side it out. Triple Fossil Dig. I'm amazed this card is still at three. I thought this might actually be the card that gets hit on the list. Um, but here we are. I thought this might go to one. It's still Triple Rotor for the deck. Not really much more to add to it. Double copies of Double Evolution Pill. It's a brick at anything more than two. And uh, just one. You can't resolve your Arcosaur enough times to make it worth doing. So... Double copies. Also for the fact that if you open one, you can still resolve Arcosaur and still play. I've had games where I've opened both of these and you are fucked. It's the reality. You're fucked most of the time. So you want an extra copy in there just in case. And three really is just too much. Triple copies of Lost World. This is kind of a pseudo... Uh, fills in the gap where Miscellaneous Aurus has left us. Of course, opening with a token on your opponent's side of the field, whether it's going first or second, could be really, really strong. Some decks have no ways to out it. The likes of Tri Brigade, for example, really struggle to deal with it. And of course, it stops your opponent targeting, which means you can play a little bit more. Even doing this going second into your opponent's ball can put you in a really good position, because if nothing else, it can actually just force them to make maneuvers that they otherwise wouldn't want to do, because they need to get rid of it. They need to play preemptively, and that means they have to play suboptimally. So just something to keep in mind. And then, of course, a single copy of Terraforming, because it's a fourth copy of the field spell. Now, onto our main go second blowout cards. We have double copies of Dark Ruler No More. This could be up to a third. Uh, I'm just playing the two because I only have the two available to me at the moment. But, of course, something to consider. Maybe a third one of these. This just switches off your opponent's board. There's not really much more to add to it. We all know what this card does. It's still absolutely fucking bonkers. We have a single copy of RP's Feather Dust. So this could actually be your other Dark Ruler No More if you have the third and you'd rather not play this. But again, there's so many back row heavy decks that so this can still be a really solid option to consider. And then finally, the mandatory go second card of Blitzsturm. Did I pronounce that right? Did it sound good, my German friends? I don't know. Lightning fucking storm. I mean, it does what it says on the tin. It's Regeki or it is Harpy's Feather Dust. It's whatever one you need. And when you see it, it's absolutely amazing. When you see multiples, you don't really care. Although, I mean, multiples isn't great. But you can see them a little bit later on in the game. And if your opponent does break your board somehow on a comeback, you can almost just yeet them away and this will win you the game. Really, really solid card. You all already know exactly what it does. And that, of course, is it for the main deck. Uh, no side deck today again because, of course... As I say, it's one of those things, the format is so open at the moment, there's really no real good answer or solution to all of this. I personally would recommend siding the scrap package, maybe the additional baby, and probably the scythe as well, so that when you go first, you can just blow out your opponent as if you're playing a go-first build. Now, onto the extra deck again as a result of that. It doesn't change much from the variants that I've used in the scrap ones. Uh, in fact, it doesn't change at all. We have a single copy of Link Karibo. Uh, this is for our combos. Of course, when we go first, it helps us get there. Secure Garden is obviously to get rid of Link Karibo. Link Karibo is also really good in the mirror match when it does come up because it can get rid of Lost World tokens. A single copy of Pentastag. It's Pentastag. It just helps enable OTKs. Because we will be siding the scrap package, of course, we want scrap wive in there. This, of course, if you're not going to play, that can be absolutely anything else that you like. A single copy of Dagda. I honestly think that even if you're not going to play any of those going first cards in your sideboard, you absolutely need to play Scythe at the very least. Because it can just end turns. Decks like Tri Brigade can't handle it. Decks like Sky Striker can't handle it. And all the other top decks that we're possibly going to be looking at in the next format really struggle with Scythe. So this is a fantastic arm. And if nothing else, you can put Lanties in and of course resolve those, which is another strong option. Nightmare Phoenix just for utility. Again, this is an optional one. I just really like it in here. You could go for something like Unicorn instead. Lambda in here uh, for when we do have to go first. Of course, we've got Gamma and Driver. Again, this is potentially quite optional. And the same for Appaloosa for when we go first. We could, of course, combo off. Now, if you'd rather have some breakboard cards like Zaboros or maybe an Axis Code Talker, definitely cards that you could consider. Abyss Dweller because it's the best rank four in the game. Pretty much it's legal. Uh, pretty much don't have to add to that. Dolka is still incredibly strong. Lagia is still incredibly strong. Dagara is to enable OTKs, uh, unclog our hands, all of that good stuff. Tornado Dragon for Scythe and, of course, back row deck, something that we are going to run into. Borrowed Savage for when we do have to go first, of course, is a good option. 
But it can also be okay going second because it's just a massive body that ends up being the gates as well. And then Psy, Frame Lord, Omega, uh, we're running Gamma and Driver, but it can also help us recycle the likes of Misk as well, which obviously is an added benefit that people weren't necessarily using it for before, but something that you could definitely consider going forward. And that is all for today's deck profile. Again, it is early days, so much of this is open to interpretation, and definitely you can have your own takes on it. This is just what I would recommend playing, at least in the early stages of the format. Just something to consider. Now, by the virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, hopefully you have enjoyed it enough to subscribe if you're not subscribed already, or maybe even hit the notification bell if you really enjoyed it, if you're that kind of weirdo. In either case, thank you very much for making it this far. You're one of the rare few who does. Whichever one of those categories you fall into, once again, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here, and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.